Pokemon trainers. Yeah. And Pokemon trainer just a hype character in my opinion. Just for, for me, I'm a little biased because I'm a humongous fan of Pokemon and Gen 1. Definitely my favorite. So the fact that like a Gen 1 Pokemon character is just meta. Yeah. Um, you know, a lot of people argue high tier, top tier. Definitely a viable character in right. my opinion. Um, but yeah, Pandarian is one of the people and that makes it work with Pokemon Trainer. It definitely shows the world what this character can do. And he's definitely been on the rise results-wise, you know. Um, he'd always been that player that's just out of the cusp of the top players that we're talking. Kind of similar to Pokemon Trainer, just out of the cusp <laughs> of the uh, the top, you know, the top characters. But Pandarian, you know, fresh off of his, you know, heartbreaking, but, you know, silver lining moral victories against uh, Esam. So close to taking, you know, a top player name at uh, BOBC. So, um, and I'm so excited to see what the future has for him. He's so young too. He's uh, that young gun. He's got so much time. Maybe you know this is the game that he was starting to put up results for sure in Smash 4. But maybe Ultimate is going to be his time to become into that upper, you know, get into that upper echelon of players. I honestly feel like he had a really great showing towards the end of Smash 4. He started taking yeah. a lot of names. He was a Meta Knight main in Smash 4, and he he did a lot of he started to take a lot of names. But now I feel like he's still riding that momentum and. My honest opinion, I don't think Meta Knight's that great in this game. Uh, yeah. So I think Pandar Pandarian made a wise decision and <laughs> not maining Meta Knight, but now maining the Pokemon Trainer. I think Pokemon Trainer a lot better than Meta Knight. And honestly, getting a lot of results right. with that Pokemon Trainer. And he's like, like you said, he's like almost there. Right. He's like right underneath that cusp. And we've seen, I, I you know, we talk, we've been talking about the good and the great. I feel like he's almost getting his way into that great area, yeah. but he, he's just right on the border. There's good, there's great, and then there's very good in between. So yeah, he's, he's a very good character. One thing I want to talk about for Pandarian, since we're waiting for Charlie for a second, um, Goodwill's hosting a charity tournament, and Pandarian was one of the people that was in voting. And the unfortunate part for Pandarian in that voting process was he came down with the flu right in the middle, like the thick of it, like right at the very end uh, when voting was at its most critical time. But he's a good guy, and I know it's because he said that if he won the tournament, he is going to donate half of his uh, half of his winnings to the uh, back oh. to the event for charity. So, oh, that's high. Yeah, so that's a good guy. You know, young man. His parents are doing right. That's, uh, that's how I feel about it. So, let's go, Pandarian. What a good kid, man. All right, so we got Momocon. Got some fights. Yeah. Momocon I mean, out in Georgia. So got. Yeah. To, oh yeah, sign up for the giveaway for Prime Saga for sure. Yeah, Momocon is such a cool event. Of course, the Mango coming up. Now having both Melee and Ultimate hit the GOAT. And yeah, the, the, the trailer for that movie, or the trailer for that tournament is so hype. Yeah. It's like so good. <laughs> and if you guys are enjoying watching the venue here, this is the same venue that we do use for MSM. So make sure to check out that weekly happening, obviously, every Monday. And yeah. earlier you were talking about the Goodwill event. Yeah, the Goodwill charity event, you know, April 27th, 28th. Make sure you... Uh, if you're in SoCal, sign up for it, you know, today or tomorrow because prices are going up on Monday. So uh, make sure you get that taken care of now. It's going to be a great event overall for charity. Got all kinds of crazy stuff happening. $10,000 invitational tournament. Um, oh, so. that is a lot of money. Yeah. And there is also a last chance qualifier, right? There's a last chance qualifier day of the event. So, nice, nice. you know, if you want to be one of the, you know, if you want to be the 12th player, that could be you on, uh, on day two for sure. And. We have some pretty fun side events lined up for some of those players overall, uh, you know, to start working through. Um, one of them's a fashion show. Um, we got uh, players playing charades, Joy-Con doubles, DDD run, old school <laughs> Brawl Duelist. Uh, so, someone went a little crazy when they were coming up with the side event goals. That's someone being me uh, sitting alone <laughs> at nighttime thinking, of what, what kind of crazy, terrible things is going to make the invited players do? So. That should be a good time all around for oh, sure. Oh yeah, you know? that, those are those are like the the good old fun times. You know right. what I mean? Like like you know, Smash, especially for us, we take the game very seriously. Yeah. But it's always good to have a casual side and have fun yeah. with the game. You know what I mean? Of course, everyone has fun competing as well. But yeah. it, that 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 casual fun. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> and of course, if you're uh, joining us here on uh, Two GGs Prime Saga here on Beyond the Summits, uh, Smash the stream, and it's a. Uh... Oh okay. Charlie is currently He's getting his pre -game oh, wait, routine there time. There he is. There he is. Here here comes Charlie. Currently top ten in SoCal. Very good uh player. Um currently maining Wolf. He probably still has the fox on deck. Oh, yeah. limboing underneath the projector. Let's go, Charlie. Showing off his moves. And going up against Washington's own Pandarian. Yeah, this on is the a, Pokemon trainer. Oh when I was looking at the brackets that we might be calling, I was like, this was the match that I was hoping that we'd get to see. I think we're in for a treat for sure. Yeah, I, I'm 
uh, excuse me for not knowing this, but I'm not too sure what Pandarian is currently ranked in the Washington PR, but I'm going to safely assume it's like top two or top three, yeah. top one. So. I think it's number one. I saw their recent PR. I think it's number one. For Yo, sure. Hold on. Hold on. I'm going to ask him. But yeah, I'm number one. What are you talking about, Green? <laughs> All right, you got it, you got it. You got it. Hey, yo, man, I just, I got a cross-reference. Yeah, check the facts. Check I got a cross-reference, bro. I got to make sure I'm not spewing out the lies, man. This is why Korean's a good commentator. I'm on the uh, shaky side because I'm. he's like, let me double check. I'm like, yeah, he's number one for sure. No problem. I I, I believe in him. No, man, sometimes there's the sleepers <laughs> out there. You know, you know, the guys that don't travel, but yeah. they, like, mess up their own region, that definitely exists in a lot of other regions. But, you know, Pandarian holding it down in Washington. Washington's number one player here competing against a uh, top 10 player for SoCal, Charlie the King. Pretty much, I mean, I'm, it's, I think it's safe to assume that we're going to see the Wolf Pokemon, Pokemon Trainer matchup. Trainer. Dang, Pandarian uses male Pokemon Trainer? Dang. And here comes that Wolf that you're it, saying. It'd be Dang. like that. Uh, this is, I think this is the first time I've commentated a male Pokemon Trainer. Really? Yeah, I'm not even, Dang. I'm not even like trolling. I don't even know how that happened. It's like, there's like, on the sociological side, how people just banded together to make sure you all pick the waifu Pokemon trainer. Like, this is some unspoken code, like people just knew. <laughs> yes. yes. All right, here we go. Oh, yeah, the Squirtle's coming out, like just so much early damage, but playing it pretty even here for Charlie. Um, are we gonna see the switch? It looks like he wants to get one more Hydro Pump potentially, but we might have to see the switch in the Ivysaur, yes. But the punish off the switch, Charlie nailing that backer, that wolf backer is so, so strong. And now, Pandarian opting the, okay, I was gonna say, you <laughs> playing Charizard at low percents is usually not a good idea because right. you get comboed hard. And he immediately went to that Ivysaur, maybe trying to pick up, uh, you know, get himself back into it with an early pick. Charizard's out trying to get that kill, maybe some back air action. And oh, maybe a Hydro Pump would have done it, but not quite hitting the mark there. Oh, another switch here. Man, These Pandarian. are daring switches right in front of yeah. him. I've, I've never seen that before. Usually they try to do it when there's a little bit of safety involved, but he just did it fearlessly. That's like, oh yeah, by the way, I'm going to Pokemon switch right in front of you. No problem. Oh yeah. Pandarian able to get that confirmed. The Razor Leaf into the up air and oh, another. He gets the grab into the up air, but doesn't opt to trigger on the next one. And Pandarian did such a good job. Now in the lead, you know, we had Charlie coming out so strong in the early goings, but Pandarian staying patient with a little bit of fearless Pokemon switching we were talking about, and he finds himself right in the lead. But Charlie able to tie it right back up and has him off stage. A good wait, you know, it's, it got Charlie just a little bit early just by delaying that get up option. Okay, here's a jump from, and wow, able to down air to change the momentum on his landing. Really, really tricky stuff coming out from Pandarian. But there's the another back air call. Yeah. Yo, the MVP for Charlie right now, that back air closing out the deep. Yeah, and speaking of back airs, you know, uh, Pandarian was feeling a little bit of early charge on back airs, trying to get something cheeky, just uh, get it going really early. But man, Charlie looking so good, putting on so much damage so quickly. Good Pokemon and switch to get out of there, though. Wolf and damage output go hand in hand, and already 86% here. Charlie getting another grab, almost getting another back air call out. All right, here we go, and he's uh, so close. Got him in the disadvantage. That's almost Charlie's opportunity to close it out. But Pandarian with a good neutral air dodge. Oh. And Charlie feeling himself. He's got a neutral air. He's going for the fly. Oh, what? Yeah, forward air is pretty strong. <laughs> I mean, probably not the best DI coming out from Charlie. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, nonetheless, man, Charizard already at 52%. But here is the back throw back air coming out from Pandarian. I thought he was going to go super hard off stage after he landed that back air, you know, knowing the percent of the situation, but try to play it safe. Maybe he feels like. He has one more opportunity at it, but he's got to get back on. Okay, here we go. Let's see if he's got some sort of uh, gimmicky option, maybe to try to steal victory. Apparently, of course, Swirmwind so Trapper Sleep. So scared scary to switch into Squirtle or Ivysaur. You get grabbed or yeah. almost hit by anything, and you're going to die. So I feel like at, at this point, he has to stick with the Zard just for the weight. Yeah. Oh, there's a dash tech. That'll take it. The boot. I'm trying to make his run back. All right, so that game number one going to get taken from Charlie. Going to seal it out with that dash tag. A very good combo tool, tech chasing tool, and last dog, last hit tool. <laughs> very, just a really good move overall. Um, I, I wouldn't say like super convincing, but it, it was uh, it was looking pretty grim. And I just feel like it was hard that last particular stock because Pandarian was in a position where it was so risky for him to switch yeah. that he just opted to stick with the Zard. And Zard's neutral versus Wolf's neutral, uh, very hard to combat that. Um, controller issues on Charlie's part? 
Not sure what's, uh, what's going Nonetheless, on here. Nonetheless, he is going to get that young reset. And we'll get right back into this set here, possibly. Everything is okay. Right, everything's good. Er, yeah, everything's good. It's been confirmed. All right, they're going through their counter picking. Let's see where he ends up. You know, uh, Pokemon Stadium 2 didn't work. He's going for a smaller stage, it looks like, in Smashville. Yep, there we go. Yeah, Smashville going to have these smaller blast zones. Not as yeah. small as you, but I mean, it's just really good for Pandarian with the Squirtle back throw, the Ivysaur back throw, um, even just like things like Flare Blitz or yeah. back air with Char Charizard. But you got also got to be careful when uh, taking Wolf to smaller blast zones because right. you can't get swiped. Don't get swiped by my man Wolf because you're gonna be hurting, and uh, you, you're gonna be hurting early, like around 40, 50 percent. That's the uh, early percentages Wolf down smash kills. So really, de really careful. And definitely on the game one side, we saw you know some of that Squirtle action coming out pretty early from Pandarian, but then when it came time to switch Pokemon. He got himself in a little bit of trouble overall and let Charlie capitalize, you know, some potent back airs. So maybe he might need to clear out some of those critical mistake areas. That might be enough to actually get him back into the lead in uh, game two and maybe steal it. So let's see what he's able to have. A good confirm. Not enough to kill. Very close. I'm sure uh, Charlie's a little shook right there. Yeah, that was, that was so, so close. That down throw into the vine whip. Very great confirm here for Ivysaur. And Darren using that up air from Ivysaur to, like, propel himself back down. But here comes the Zard. Yeah, Zard's out, and they're both pretty even. Who's going to blink first? That's a throw. Oh. Is going to be enough to kill? Up throw? Not quite. Wolf being a little yeah, heavy. That, that kill throw is, like, deceptively, like, not that great. Oh, but no. the poor tilt will call it out. Yeah, that's a good call. He's like, Charlie went for a Galaxy Brain option with an up special, you know, onto the stage from the ledge, and it just got stuff. Yeah. yeah Speaking of just getting stuff, though, back here just got that stuff right there. So we got some stuffing going on back and forth here on the game, and they're but back yeah, right into it. Pretty much back here, stock number two, Squirtle versus Wolf. Pretty much how the uh, first stock started off. And usually, like I pointed out, um, Pokemon trainers usually like to stick it out with the Squirtle at that earlier part. Can be harder to hit, plus you have that really great combo game to about 50-ish percent. And that's usually when we see like some kind of Hydro Pump set up into the IV source. He's got that 50 percent you're talking about, getting a little bit of extra damage. He's at mid-60s. Oh, that down smash and there's down that, the range. There's a down smash into Ivysaur. But that was just enough oh time for Charlie my. to capitalize. So much damage off that one string. Oh, what a brave neutral air. And he almost got the kill for recovering. Oh, there's the nair. Oh, the upbeat. Not going to quite get it there. And oh, but flash will kill. Wow, Charlie. What a string of disadvantage just pushing in general there. Charlie did such a great job. Oh, but the up air, not quite enough to kill just yet. No rage on top of Pandarian. Wow. Force by Pandarian, able to tie it back up. And, you know, Pandarian does not want to go to losers. He was hoping to make a deep run into this bracket. And he's sitting, you know, one game away from that trip. Charlie looking so good so far, but by some, you know, miracle on Pandarian's part, he's able to keep himself in it and keep it tied. Charlie's yeah. looking so good. Charlie Diang in on that down throw. Just going to get nared there. Oh, watch out. And, and that's the scary part. You don't want to get vine whipped and, like, be holding out as you're Diang out on the down throw. <laughs> And yeah, right straight now, to the boss zone. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Hey, Charlie racking up some good damage here. Oh, the parry into the forward tilt. Nice stuff coming out from Charlie. Oh, oh no, he got swiped. Swipe. You can't get swiped, man. You can't get swiped. Charlie going to take that 2-0 over Pandarian. It all just went south so fast. Pandarian looked like he was doing so well. And it's just like, again, one Pokemon switch in. Charlie was right there. He just knew. He's like, it's like that uh, Pokemon setup where it's a uh, shift instead of set. <laughs> You don't get yeah. that extra turn when you switch, and um, 